And welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for sticking with us and hanging out. My name is Adrian San Miguel. I'm a principal partner enterprise architect here at AWS and joined yet again by my lovely co-host, Jasmine. Say hey, Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine. All right. I asked for that, to be completely <laughs> honest. Um, I learned a lot in Andy's conversation. There was a lot of really good data points in there, but, you know, as he mentioned DuckDB, you know, the more I hear about it, the more I play with it, the the more I realize it really is all that it is quacked up to be, <laughs> completely honest with you. Okay. Okay, really? That's it? All right. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, touching on the pendulum use story, I'm really glad we were able to swing that one. And most importantly, talking about how important the, the database is as a part of your overall architecture. I mean, the talk was so good, I'm really holding out hope for a sequel. But enough of that. We are here to talk about something very interesting, something kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, growing up in the data center, it's a storage admin. And I understand we are joined by a special guest today. Hi. Hi. Would, you, would you mind taking a second to introduce yourself and letting us know what your favorite type of pie is? Uh, I'm Ruhi Sood. I'm a product manager on the Amazon S3 team. And uh, I'm going to be talking about S3 metadata today. Um, so S3 metadata is um, an easy way for customers to get rich metadata about their objects um, in a queryable manner in iceberg tables that Andy just talked about mm -hmm. you know, in S3 tables. And it just uh, it's a game changer right now for customers who are trying to parse through their vast data lakes like you just mentioned, Adrian. Yep. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. a, that's actually a great segue. Chat, we've got a question for you. Um, we've got a bit of a poll. Uh, how many total requests do customers execute daily on S3 data lakes? And I promise don't know the answer to this, but odds are you probably do or at least have a good range. So let us know. And uh, towards the end, we'll circle back to it, see if we can't get that answer. But Ruhi, um, really curious as to what led the direction to going out and building this in this specific way. What were you hearing from customers? What we've seen from customers over the past few years is that data lakes are sprawling. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes these data lakes can contain trillions of objects. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging to, to find the right data sets that customers can use for analytics or to train their machine learning models or just to understand you know, the right storage patterns. It's becoming harder and harder. And um, this is where we, we um, identified that meta, metadata was at the heart of customers' uh, data discovery. Um, and we came up with S3 metadata, which is um, an easy way for customers to quickly find the right data sets that they can use to train their machine learning models, to just understand um, the cost, their storage, and also an easy way for you to see your custom metadata that you add to your S3 objects. Yeah, um, so that's interesting, Ruby. Um, what kinds of metadata can I generate using this feature? Oh, I'm, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so um, today you can get um, information about the object. Um, you can get, get the bucket, the key, the storage class, the size. Um, you also get custom metadata, which includes tags and user-defined metadata. Um, I'll take a minute to explain uh, tags and user-defined metadata. Um, so tags is a way for customers to add key value pairs, um, key value pair style metadata to S3 objects. It's mutable, uh, which means that you can change it um, after you've even after you've uploaded the object. Um, user defined metadata, on the other hand, is um, uh, it's also a key value pair style metadata that you can add to the object at the time of object upload. So it's not okay. mutable. Uh, but these both of them are great ways if you want to get custom metadata, you're trying to tag an object and say this is related to business X from geography Y. It's it's super easy for you to do that with these custom metadata options today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love hearing that. It, that's super interesting. But our audience is looking for a little bit of metadata on you. So Rui, <laughs> Adrian asked you a question and you didn't quite get to it. Um, AM Grobe says, I hope Adrian and Jasmine will follow up on this favorite pie. That is an important question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was going to give a very, very universal answer, but I skipped it. My favorite pie is apple pie. Oh, that's a classic. <laughs> and yeah, so that's my favorite pie. And awesome. So we're talking about different things that hold things together. Let us, you know, kind of pivot to a question that I had as you're, you're speaking, you know, hearkening back to my days as a storage admin and even helping architect customer solutions. Having to deal with wanting to tag all the things and be ultra precise gets very tricky because the more you do, the higher this cost and very likely um, the bigger the sprawl and more systems, more data to touch. Uh, 
Do you have any guidance or thoughts about this? Well, uh, again, a very timely question. Uh, you can use tags to do that, but I hear you on the cost. Uh, we are always listening to our customers, mm -hmm. um, and we just recently uh, uh, dropped the prices on S3 object tags uh, just yesterday by 35% uh, across all regions. So now all the more reason for you to use tags, store your custom metadata, and use S3 metadata uh, to explore your, your storage landscape. Awesome. Um, I would love to see what this looks like in practice. Any chance that we can pivot to a demo? Totally. Let's awesome. do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here I have a bunch of S3 buckets. I'm, I'm going to play with this one mm -hmm. uh, for a moment. I have some objects prefixed in various ways. The the S3 metadata is actually very easy to set up. Um, we're doing it on the console, so it's a little visual, and you can see how easy it is. Okay. All you have to do is set up a metadata configuration. And really what you're setting up, like I said, your metadata goes to S3 tables, which are iceberg tables. You can query them uh, with Athena or um, some open source engines. So all that you're doing here is providing a destination table bucket. So you go and find a destination table bucket. In this case, I already have one. I'm going to select it. And really, um, just choose whatever name you want. Um, I'm going to put apple pie here. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you go and create your metadata configuration. So while it's, it's building, I have one built out here um, just for the purposes of demo. Once it's built out, this is what it looks like. You're going to get uh, a table line. You're going to get your table bucket name. Um, and from here, it's playtime. All you got to do is go to Athena, which is the simplest uh, way for us to query here right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to start with just showing you what the table looks like. Here's the table schema. Um, you can actually just preview the table. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You were able to click from inside the metadata to maintain that context and continue on to start doing queries without having to go reload everything again. Yes, you are. And my bucket right now, uh, like I was saying, it's it, it has a bunch of objects. They're mm -hmm. getting deleted. They're getting changed. And um, you will see very shortly um, how easy it is for me to see what's happening within my bucket. So right here, we, we try to uh, explore the schema. You were asking me about what type of metadata do we have today. Um, we, we've we got, like I said, bucket, keys. Um, it, you can tell what objects are deleted. This is These are the changes that are happening in my bucket. In this case, these are delete markers because it's a version bucket. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the storage class. And most interestingly, this is the custom metadata that we have been talking about. So you can see the tags, the user-defined metadata. And um, what what we have right now is is uh, is also provides you with information about the requester in this case the account ID or the source IP that's making the request. Oh, so no more denying. Hey, I didn't make that change. Or, <laughs> it wasn't me that dropped the database. Or whoops, sorry, I nuked the bucket. Did you do that, Adrian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a story for another day. I'm going to uh, use uh, the tags today. That's the first query that we're going to run. So let's say your use case is you're trying to run analytics or and you want to avoid everything that has PII. You usually tag your object. Um, previously, the way customers would have gotten to this is like they would run get object tagging on their entire storage landscape and then try to parse through this data. Setting up data in this manner is extremely time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, but now what you can do uh, right here, I'm going to run a small query, just limited to 10 results for now. Um, what we're going to see here is a list of objects that have PII. Um, and you can, uh, you can just list down objects with PII true or false in this case and just quickly build your data sets. Um, that's the power of S3 metadata, the ability for you to curate your data sets for ML analytics, storage analysis in a matter of seconds. Um, there's one more interesting use case that I want to bring up. Um, you can Today, you can use Bedrock's async API to actually produce um, uh, videos in, that you can store in S3 metadata. And yes, and um, Bedrock annotates those videos with um, Amazon Bedrock as the source and also tells what models are being used to produce that data. And it's a very easy way for customers today to identify um, what data is um, 
is synthetic, what data is raw, original, and we've actually added um, that to SC metadata. So if if you if you're using Amazon Bedrock to generate uh, content in S3 tables, mm -hmm. in in S3 metadata, um, uh, we can quickly identify what which of your objects were generated by Amazon Bedrock, um, and what we should see here is uh, what I was referring to, which is um, you can see that this was generated by the Nova Real model and the content source is Amazon Bedrock. Nice. Um, that's Those are uh, the most popular use cases that we have today. That is fantastic. Uh, chat, let us know what, you, what other uh, type of questions you may have here for us as we are live. I just wanted to make sure that we, we do touch on that. We had a, a comment in the chat asking if we were live. Yes, we are. We're absolutely live. This is live. We didn't have a demo dance, so, which is always the <laughs> easiest way to tell <laughs> to whether know that we're live. Because the, the demo god must be satiated. It's either the drop of blood or the dance. But yeah. uh, for, for reasons, we're not allowed to do the, the blood thing anymore. And that uh, was for Kit Kat PS. We see you. We are live. Don't, you know, this is not a recording hey how else will we do this but let us know what questions you have here for Ruhi we love seeing this s3 metadata in mm -hmm. practice um Ruhi what has been you know the feedback from the customers as you've been talking about this we know that you um had a blog post around reinvent time like what's mm -hmm. been interesting to hear from customers we've uh, we've had a lot of excitement from customers on this um, especially customers who are building lar these large scale data lakes have been excited about the ability to get this custom metadata uh, queried in an easy um, e e queryable in an easy manner mm -hmm. uh, we're also seeing uh, customers bring their own custom metadata into s3 tables we actually have a blog on this where you can bring your own custom metadata into s3 tables and join it against these metadata tables to get even more insights than than um, what you can today um, and there's also been a lot of um, uh, buzz around uh, other types and we're getting a lot of feedback on what um, other fields other metadata types customers want to see and we continue to work on that feedback awesome all right we have a question from chat peter jew asked is there a way to define this metadata via code rather than ui oh totally Ooh. totally i should have said that uh i'm i'm just doing it on the console just just to be visual but you can totally use our apis uh, sdks uh, or cli what, whatever is your prefer preferred format to uh to maintain your metadata tables and and uh to to uh, to create them to begin with so it sounds like just about any slice or, or path that you take to go and do this, we're going to be able to find a way to, to meet you where you are, right? Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, selfishly, I, I do a lot of work with partners and, and uh, customers in this space. I can absolutely see how the ability to bring your own metadata and join with what the service is already offering and exposing is going to be huge because uh, something that I have been very, very stringent with and uh, almost to the point of being naggy with some of my partners is you have to be as precise and crisp as you can with your data labeling strategy as well yes. as um, how you access it. That way it doesn't cost you as much to go get it. That way anybody that's looking for it can use you know, either natural language or a very easy to write query so that it doesn't require tons of complex SQL or um, usually what the mathematician's favorite language is, Python, uh, to go and figure out exactly what they need to get, how to get it. And, you know, the thing we don't talk about in all of that research and churn is how expensive the time of these individuals are and how that can translate directly into lower amount of dollars to go and do the thing. And something we'd like to focus on a lot is ROI per engagement. So the further we shrink that down, the better for the business. Is that about accurate? Yeah, that that is about accurate. And I and I think the ability right now for, for customers to to, like like we were discussing, to bring in custom metadata uh, actually adds to what you're saying here. The um, it's uh, there is a lot of business value that customers can generate by um, not having to orchestrate and maintain all of these complex metadata pipelines and um, spending hours and resources, which could be better put to use on on meeting the business goals. Uh, all you have to do is um, just identify the general purpose buckets that you want to tune for your um, that, that you want to dig into for metadata or for your business uh, purposes and turn on S3 metadata and you can use SQL, like you said, that everyone's favorite way to query yeah. <laughs> metadata. <laughs> yeah, so. so speaking of using SQL, you know, you've mentioned Amazon Athena, but can this be used with QuickSight and if so, how? 
Yes, um, yes, totally. You can use it with um, Amazon Athena. You can use it with Amazon QuickSight. Um, uh, it's very easy to set up with QuickSight. Uh, we have a detailed blog post out there which walks us through the steps uh, on how you can set it up with QuickSight. Uh, you can also use uh, open source engines um, to to interact directly with these tables. So there are a number of ways out there uh, today that you can use to to query this data. Awesome. Uh, we've got a question for the chat from Shman Shmandru Shmandru. Uh, I butchered that, but I'm sorry. Uh, can I put all of my data into S3 user-defined metadata and use it as an endless database if I wanted to? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a little controversial. It's spicy. I like it and appreciate it. But curious of your take on that, Rui. Um, well, uh, it uh, it depends on what what is this, the there there are limitations on the size okay. of uh, metadata and user defined metadata. But as long as you keep within those size limits, you can. Uh, if you're actually trying to expand and go beyond, um, you can you can use tags. You can do ten tags per object. So that's another scalable way for you to append more metadata. Um, and put everything that you would want um, into um, metadata tables. Awesome. Um, another question for the chat from Malin Arkin. What is the effective level at which uh, tags can be applied in S3 tables? Can it go down to the table level or is there something more for, uh, granular? So uh, tags today are object le level tags, the ones that we're talking about. This is object level metadata. So every single time you, you, you add uh, an object to your bucket or your uh, updating the tags. These are object level tags. Um, there are bucket level tags, but that's that's uh, different because mm -hmm. we're talking about object level metadata here um, for customers who want insights within their buckets. Yeah. So in short, tags are not currently supported on S3 tables. Uh, Object tags are supported. Object tags, but not supported. bucket tags. Not bucket tags. Got okay, it. great. Thank you for that uh, delineation, Mark. Uh, Ruhi, is there anything else that you'd love to leave for the audience, uh, kind of like as a, a nugget of wisdom, where they can get started, where they can start kicking the tires, or any generalized guidance you think um, that would be beneficial for the audience to hear from you? Um, I highly recommend visiting our product pages, our feature page, to get started. Um, as I mentioned, there is a detailed blog post out there which walks you step by step on how you can set this up. We've also talked about how you can bring your custom metadata uh, in a separate blog post and join it with the ST metadata tables. Um, and um, yeah, please share your feedback with us. Uh, we're constantly working to make this richer and um, ease your metadata workflow management. Um, so yeah, share your feedback with us and um, we're always w working on customer feedback. Yeah, awesome, Ruby. Thank you. I love going through this. I love when people bring us demos. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it is just my favorite thing. But audience, back to you. We had a poll question in the beginning for those of you watching on Twitch, and we asked how many total requests to customers execute daily on S3 data lake. So let's see if we can get the answer to that poll there. And while we are pulling that up, um, we also have a survey. And so our first 100 people who take the survey, let us know how we're doing, what it is that you want to see. Um, you'll get $25 in AWS credits. I mean, why not? Why not respond to the survey? Um, <laughs> remember, folks, this is a show for you and effectively by you, you tell us what you want to see more of, and we're happy to oblige and get you the, the type of content that you're looking for. So by all means, take a couple minutes, fill out that survey. We would love to hear from you. But for now, stay, uh, hang tight, stick with us. We'll be back after a quick break and look forward to bringing you yet another fantastic piece of content. Thank you so much. <laughs> 